The scripture today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Here begins the reading. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Here ends the reading. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In its most basic sense, a saint is a holy one, someone who is set apart for God's special purpose. That definition includes every follower of Jesus. When we are baptized, we are set apart. So it is good for us on this first Sunday in November to focus on who we are and whose we are. Our world is in need of saints who pursue their calling with everything we've got. This day we remember the saints we know, the saints we have loved, who now dwell with God, who wipes away their tears, where there is no more crying and there is no more pain. On March 16th of last year, my family lost one of our most gifted and brilliant patriarchs, my uncle Miles. It wasn't COVID that claimed his life, but COVID certainly made everything more complicated. COVID made it hard for us to say goodbye. My uncle Miles was born in Fort Worth in 1926, graduated from Waxahachie High School, and made his way to San Diego to join the U.S. Navy, working during World War II on a project so secret that no one was allowed to mention its name, radio detection and ranging, which we now think of as radar. In 1948, my uncle married his high school sweet, sweetheart, his soulmate, my Aunt Harleen. In the words of Jerry Maguire, she completed him even before we knew that was a thing. After the war, he was back to enter North Texas State College, that was the name back then, earning his bachelor and master's degrees in physics and then on to Stanford for a PhD. His work there was on the basic science of nuclear magnetic resonance, which we think of as MRI. And then it was back to North Texas to join the faculty where he served as a professor of physics for 40 years. Spent some time in the 70s as academic vice president, but how he loved the classroom as a musician himself. He especially loved teaching the physics of musical acoustics. And he endeared himself to lots of music students at North Texas over the years. Now, those details I just shared with you, they don't even come close 
to telling you, telling you what he meant to our family, to the academic community he was part of, to the churches he served as a gifted lay leader. But what I want you to know on this All Saints Sunday is what I learned about my Uncle Miles, learned from my Uncle Miles about being a saint. Three things in particular. First, he taught me by example how to be fully engaged in worship. My very favorite memories are sitting next to him in a creaky pew at Community Presbyterian Church in Lake City, Colorado. I hope you can imagine that. Following his retirement, my aunt and uncle would spend their summers in a cabin near the Continental Divide along the highway between Creed and Lake City. They would cross two mountain passes every Sunday morning just to go to church. During the summer, the pews of that little historic church were packed with all the folks attracted to the 14,000 foot peaks in Hensdale County. It is a great place to go. So my uncle would look for a pew that was available. He would greet the people around him, and then he would settle in with his hymnal and the worship bulletin. He would give his full attention to the prelude, respectful of the time that musician had spent preparing to lead the congregation into worship. My uncle loved singing hymns. Always glad to contribute his bass to an alto or tenor singing nearby. It was holy collaboration for him, an inbreaking of the kingdom of God as the notes and the words called the flock to contemplate God's goodness. In fact, we played a little bit of a trivia game around the words of hymns. It would begin with me or my aunt and uncle sending an email with a line from a hymn and seeing how long it would take the other person to guess which hymn it was. Now, we would never send the opening line, of course. That would be way too easy. And we had a definite bias toward classic hymns, and in particular, Isaac Watts. So here's an example. Your bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. What hymn is that? Oh my gosh, they guessed it the last time. I changed the, I changed the line. <laughs> I didn't want them to go, oh, we know that. Oh, worship the king. Oh, worship the king. All right, here's one more, also changed from last time. Changed from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place. Oh my gosh. Love divine, all loves excelling. Russ says he was just about to say that. Long, long before the minister ever made his way to the pulpit or hers, the words of beloved hymns had already fed my uncle and filled his heart to overflowing. And sometimes as we took our seats again after the hymn, you could see a little sparkle, a little teardrop in the corner of his eye. It wasn't unusual at all. And he gave that same kind of attention to all the prayers that were offered. Um, he gave that attention to anyone who contributed, and then after worship, he would engage the minister, the other worship leaders, expressing his appreciation for their contribution. There was no such thing for my Uncle Miles as an ordinary worship service. He surrendered his considerable mind and his heart to every gathering of the faithful. He taught me over the years that saints arrive at church every Sunday expecting an encounter with the God of grace and glory. And when you do that, you are never disappointed. As much as my Uncle Miles loved Sunday mornings in the pew, he could transform a morning of fly fishing into worship too. You better believe it. Careful preparation of rods, a selection of flies for every occasion, an extensive knowledge of the vest fishing spots made him ready to surrender to the beauty of God's world. Every bite of the day's catch, 
expertly prepared by my aunt, was enjoyed with the same kind of reverence for the fish, for the stream, for the experience of that day. On one visit, I asked him if we might collect some smooth river stones for a landscape project I was working on back home in Texas. Now, I hope it's not against the law to transport stones from Colorado to Texas. If it is, pretend like you didn't hear this from me. We drove quite a distance on the highway that day, and then we left the highway for a dirt, dusty dirt road and then off-road entirely. And as we talked, I was looking out the window of the truck. I could see all kinds of more than acceptable stones. I began to wonder if my uncle had forgotten the mission of our trip. But when we stopped, I discovered the reason for that extended trip there were river stones as smooth as satin in beautiful colors. Who knew there were stones and colors like that? He did. He remembered from several years ago when he'd been there on a fishing expedition. And he tucked that location away in his memory for safekeeping. So I shopped for stones. He patiently waited and then helped me carry them back to the truck. I learned from Uncle Miles that saints move through each day mindful of the beauty of the earth as a constant reminder of God's presence, God's goodness, choosing to live in a state of perpetual thanksgiving and to cherish every opportunity to stand in awe of God's handiwork. One final lesson from my saint the importance of taking the time to discover what is remarkable about each person who crosses your path, each one an original created in God's image. Uncle Moss taught me to practice curiosity long before that was one of the values of University Christian Church. I remember when Thanksgiving gathered at my mom's house, we were in the living room, cousins and aunts and uncles and my brothers and their families. It was after the meal and we were settling in for a much anticipated visit. My family, this may surprise you to know, really likes to talk. I know that's shocking. Russ laughed a little too hard at that line at the first in the early service. We like to talk, we like to laugh. There was a moment later on when uh, everyone took a breath at the same time, you know, that, that happens sometimes. And my Uncle Miles shared with us his scientific observation of how many conversations were going on at the same time in that room, almost as if we had set some sort of new record. He even claimed that some people were participating in multiple conversations at the same time. Quite one of the gifts of my family, for sure. So in a family that loved to talk, Uncle Miles was happy to be the observer delighting in the differences. He taught me the gift of giving someone your full attention, of listening with your whole body, of asking the perfect follow-up question, of affirming their originality of each person in a way that made you feel clever and amazing and very worthwhile. He was never in a hurry. He was happy to share what he knew, which was considerable, about carpentry or playing the guitar or the computer. But it was never a master class going on and on and on, because he was listening closely and determining what would be useful to you, what would be useful in this particular project. Never more, never more than that. My Uncle Miles turned into, tuned into the creator at work in every person, and then he marveled at the variety, at all the hidden talents, at the goodness and grace. Because he chose to love people, he was devoted to discovering what was amazing about each one. What I think about saints ordinary saints, is they always have a way of teaching us to slow down so we can see God at work in the world around us. You can't do that when you're rushing. 
as I worked on how I would share my Uncle Miles with you today, one particular scripture kept singing in the background. I want you to listen to these instructions from the Apostle Paul in a letter to the church in Philippi, chapter 4. I think we could call this Sainthood 101. See what you think. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy, my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And then let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure and pleasing and commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen, and the God of peace will be with you. Through my Uncle Miles, I have observed a saint who followed all those instructions. Thank you, God, for all the saints we remember today.